Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to chapter 310 of the Arduino series. In this video we're going to be covering something very simple, a 4x4 button matrix with a dedicated library. And if you wish to follow along, you're only going to need the button matrix, 8 female to male jumper wires and the Arduino. Now one of the limitations of using such a large button matrix is the amount of pins that it occupies. In our case it's going to be using 8 pins, leaving you only 5 to play around with. If your button matrix looks anything like mine, it's going to have its pins labeled. I connected R4, 3, 2, and 1 to pins in the Arduino 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the pins C1 to C4 connected to the pins on the Arduino 6, 7, 8, and 9 respectively. Now the library we're going to be using is called Keypad and it's made by Adafruit. So to access this and to download it, you just want to go to Sketch, go down to the row that says Include Library, and click on Manage Libraries. Then you want to search up Keypad and download the one that says Adafruit Keypad. I, in my case, encountered two installs, one the actual Keypad library and another one to support the Keypad library. If it's that case, just click Next and OK. Now moving on to our code, I begin by adding the Keypad library. Then there's going to be two variables that are going to store the amount of columns and rows. Then there's going to be two arrays, single rows, that are going to store the pins that the matrix is connected to. Now what follows next is the array that's going to be mapped onto your button matrix. However, the keypad function only accepts a character array. This means that you can only put a single integer, a single symbol, or a single letter. The letter can be either uppercase or lowercase. Now for the keypad function, it's going to be stored in a variable that's going to have the type keypad. So it's going to take the structure keypad, the name of your variable is equal to the keypad function. Within this function, there's going to be the command make keymap, which is going to map the array that you've chosen. I'm going to be going with my example of keys. Then you want to tell it where and what are your row pins and also your column pins. Then you want to tell it how many rows you have and how many columns you have. And you want to make sure that it takes this order. In the setup, we only tell the Arduino to activate the serial monitor with a board rate of 9600. In the loop function, I have a command called key press, that's a character type. It's going to store the value that's associated with the button that I have pressed. So it's going to take the command, the name of the keypad function that I've given. So it's called my keypad dot get key. Then I have an if command that says that if key pressed is true, print the text button pressed in the simple if statement. And then it's going to print the value that that's associated with the variable key pressed. Then it's going to continue to a different function called the get button pressed. And before that, you're going to have another text just so I can separate between the two functions. Now I've made it so that the custom get button pressed function takes in a character type variable. The variable I've chosen is going to be the key pressed variable. It's going to take the switch command and filter the cases by the button pressed, which is the equivalent of the key pressed value. Now, I hope that you've noticed that all the cases have a character type. And so this is because of the variable that's going to be inputted. So let's say, for instance, I press the top left button to press one. If I did not have the single quotations, it would not work and it would not print me the integer one. Now, the wisdom behind using this function, it allows me to change how much and what I can output. So instead of only being limited to one letter, one symbol, one number, I can change it to as long as a string as I want or as long as a number I want with or without decimal places. Now I'm done explaining the code. All you have to do now is upload it and go into the serial monitor. You'll notice that as soon as we press any one of those, it will have two statements, two strings, and each string will show a corresponding value. Now when I press the top left button, I'm going to be presented with two strings. Each one will come from a different function or different variable. The first one is going to come directly from the key pressed variable and the second one is going to be coming from the function. It's going to be separated by the string. And when I press the two middle buttons in the bottom row, S14 and S15 are the symbols that are, that are linked to the button matrix. I will get the integer 500 and I will get the string that I've chosen. Now this does conclude the video. If you did learn anything new, consider giving it a like. And if you wish to join the small community that I'm trying to build, there is going to be my Discord linked in the description. 